Good evening, everyone. It's Gomrath here with Gomrath Games, and I apologize that I sound a little bit quiet, but my wife is asleep, so I can't be too loud while recording this. Now, I'm going to be bringing you tonight a guide on the best pets in Draenor, the wild-caught pets. I'm not going to talk about faction pets or pets that you can get from raids. Um, that'll be in a future video, but... We're going to start out here in the Frostfire Ridge, and this is a pet that I love. He is my go-to. You know, he's my main bay as far as PvP pet gap battles go, and that is the Frostfire Rat. Okay, he's identical in stats and in moves to the blind rat that is found in the sewers of Dalaran currently in Draenor. Pardon me. Nope, I said that wrong. I'll just edit this out. <laughs> So the Frostfur Rat is identical in moveset, in stats, and in everything to the Blind Rat that you can find out in the Broken Isles in Dalaran there down in the sewer. This guy is fantastic. He's part of my favorite PvP team, my Dark Rat team that has a grand total of 235 wins and only 9 losses. So he is fantastic. The other pet that I pick up here is this Frost Shell Pincher. Now, there are several different types of excuse me, types of uh, these crabs here in Draenor. And if you get a power, power breed, they'll end up with 357 power and a really, really powerful rip slash blood in the water combo. Now, what's kind of a weakness to these guys is they don't really have a basic attack. Like you could go rip blood in the water shell shield. That's usually what I run when I'm running up against elementals. But... They just don't really have a filler, and rip does not do a lot of damage. So usually it's just apply rip, throw them blood and water, and then switch. So that'll do it for Frostfire Ridge. Just pick up that Frostfire Rat. I would recommend picking up a Speed Speed Breed and a Power Speed Breed. Um, the Speed Speed is just really, really fantastic in PvP. He outspeeds just about everything, with an exception of flying type pets and rabbits that are Speed Speed Breeds. But that'll do it for Frostfire Ridge. All right, guys, our trip around Draenor has now brought us to Gorgrond. And look how awesome this zone is. It really looks like it's either Arizona or New Mexico mixed with like a medieval fortress in the background and a tropical jungle. So that's kind of cool. But here in Gorgrond, there's a couple pets that you want to snag. So the first one I want to talk about is the Mudback Calf. Now, the Mudback Calf is almost identical to the pet that you can snag from Dalarand, uh in the pet shop there with uh, charms I think he's called like something calf I don't I don't really call his name just right off the bat but he's a beast type a beast type pet that has a water move so he can be good against elementals and he also has two humanoid moves he can do the clobber takedown combo which is pretty strong so yeah, this guy is fantastic. The other pet I wanted to mention are the Axe Beaks here. So we have an Axe Beak and a Jungle Beak, and they're exactly the same pet, and they come in the same breeds, and their stats are exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter which one. Now, I would recommend farming for a Power Power breed. Now, Power Power is really, really hard-hitting, and he can do the Rain Dance Nocturnal Strike combo, which I actually really like, and I almost like it better than the Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo. So it's really entirely up to you what you want. Um, the reason I don't run this guy is because I really like darkness teams. Because, for example, take a look at the Bone Serpent here. He has a move that is strong versus humanoids. He has a move that's strong versus dragons. And he's got a move that's strong versus aquatics. So this guy has three different types of moves against really common pets in PvP. So that's why I like him better. But, I mean, and... Look at this guy as well. He's got the strong versus dragons and then two that are strong versus aquatic type. So that's why I choose the Northern Hawk Owl over the Axe Beak, but he's a really solid choice. So here out of Gorgrond, once again, just snag yourself an Axe Beak or a Jungle Beak, go for a Power Power Breed, and then grab a Mudback Calf. But that'll do it for here. All right, our tour of Draenor has brought us to Tanan Jungle. Now this was a really cool area that I enjoyed during this expansion and it just allowed for you to um, come in here and play catch up with gear if you like 
power leveled your character, this was a place where you could come and just fly around and pick up good pieces of gear, which I really like that. Just allowed me to um, kind of not feel so left behind. And anyway, <laughs> in here in Tanan, there are the tiny terrors of Tanan. And they are legendary pets that you fight against that are actually really challenging and they're really fun. Uh, they can be beaten by a team, which is this team right here. I'll show it in a minute. But what did I want to talk about here were the pets that drop into Nan Jungle. Now, a wild caught pet that you can find here is the Fen Crab. A small side note about the Fen Crab he only ever comes in the rare variety. Now, you will see the Fen Crab when you are fighting this little fella right here, the Tainted Mole Claw. He almost always has fen crabs in his back line, and the fen crabs are always rare quality. So that's been my experience. I don't know if that's it 100% of the time, but 100% of the time that I've ever ran into the fen crab, he's always been rare. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can pick him up. He's got that really great combo I talked about, but no filler moves. So he's good in particular situations. Now, when you beat the Tiny Terrors, they have a chance to drop a few pets. Now, one of those pets is the Blazing Firehawk. And this is kind of a cool pet because he is a flying type that has elemental moves that can be strong versus machines, or he can have some moves that are strong versus magic. But you're playing with that double-edged sword where you have a flying type that's strong. Oh, he doesn't come from the Tiny Terrors. Excuse me. He comes from Order of the Awakened. Yeah, I forgot I grounded all that rep so I could get Draenor flying. But as I was saying, he's got that double-edged sword of being a flying type that's got moves that are strong versus magic types. And there's not a single magic type in the game that doesn't have a move that can like blow the pants off a flying type, except the Nightmare Bell. Now, the Nightmare Bell is a really cool pet. And I've seen him used really effectively in certain teams just because he is a magic type that's got Call Darkness and Curse of Doom. And I've seen some people re roll Rebirth, but I don't think it's very useful, um, especially compared to the amount of damage that Curse of Doom does. But there's a couple cool pets that that drop from those fell flames. And other than that, you know, you got the Bloodbeak, which is just another version of all the tropical birds in Draenor. And I'd go for the Power Power Breed with the Rain Dance Nocturnal Strike. But other than that, yeah, Tanan doesn't have anything incredible um, to write home about. You know, it's got the Fell Flame, but those are also found out in uh, Shadow Moon Valley. So the best pets to, that I would recommend snagging here is I really like the Zanger Spore. I use him for Hyuna of the Shrines when I'm leveling up pets. He's just really useful for that fight. And... The fell pup has his uses at times, but nothing incredible here, nothing game breaking, but there are some definite cool pets out in Tanan. So stop here, beat the tiny terrors. Oh, the team that you can beat all the tiny terrors with is this one right here. Tiny terrors of Tanan with the new South Idol, Chrominius, and the Zandalari Ankle Render. I'd recommend the Power Power Breed. Um, I gave mine to a dear friend of mine and have been searching for one ever since, but I just can't seem like, they're just not getting lucky on the auction house. So, that's the setup you want as well. But that'll do it for Tanan. Now, the forest spiderling, he is your average spider pet. And he comes in a power speed breed. He does not have a pure breed. But, one pet that I use very frequently is this little mud jumper here. Okay. Now, I haven't leveled up my health balance breed and that's the one breed that I would recommend but this guy is really really useful for some tamer fights now if you're doing the Northrin tamers this guy here can solo nearly headless Jacob I mean he can take out all three of his guys just running bubble mudslide and tongue lash he's just a really fantastic pet he has I think the exact same moveset as that frog Benaziac or something that you get out in Suramar. So I'd snag him. Then the other pet I wanted to talk about out here is this guy right here. The Gold Dawn Feather. Okay. I've been trying to find a power power breed of this guy for legit forever. I actually have spent a good amount of time farming and just have not been lucky. Now, what makes this guy cool 
is he's got sunlight, which increases the healing that you do. He also has love potion, which heals you for 25% of your health. But if you have sunlight out, it says during sunny day, the maximum health of all pets is increased by 50% and healing done increased by 25%. So this guy can be really effective in some healing teams. And he's just really cool looking. So out here in the spires of Iraq, the pets I would snag is a health balance mud jumper. And then try to find yourself a power power golden dawn feather. And then the crabs out here are the same as all the crabs in Draenor. So that's what I'd recommend out of the spires of Iraq. All right, we have made our way into Talador. It's a, a really awesome zone. I liked I, you know what? I say that about just every single zone that I'm in. I mean, there's a few zones that I didn't enjoy, but I enjoy World of Warcraft, so I like most of the zones. Um, the three pets that I would snag here are, the first one is the Flat Tooth Calf. Now, the Flat Tooth Calf, he's the exact same as the Mudback Calf, the one that I talked about over in Gorgrond. Um, so you can snag either one of these. Uh, get yourself a Health Health Breed and a Health Power Breed. Just because these guys are beasts. Like this health health breed. Look at this. He has 1725 health. Now there's pets in the game that have more health than that. Like Pebble has more health than that. And uh, the HH Spirit Crab has more health than that. But he's really solid. And to have that much health and then just have baseline speed and baseline attack is really nice. So yeah, snag yourself a flat tooth calf. He's useful in, or useful in some of the Broken Isles tamers. Now... I've already talked about the kelp scuttler and the mud jumper here, but the other pets I want to talk about here is the brilliant blood feather. Now the blood feather is pretty similar to that other blood feather uh, pet that's over in uh, Spires of Iraq, but he does not have sunlight. Instead, he has drained blood, which you are healed for 300% of the damage or 10% of your enemy's health. So this is really effective against pets with larger health pools. And I like to have, I've tried for a power power breed of this guy. The closest I've gotten is that power balance one. But you know, when I get a power power breed, this is a pet that I want to try some PVP with because he's cool and he's got a unique moveset. Now the other pet I wanted to briefly mention is the Shadow Spore Bat. And I know you're looking at his moveset thinking, wow, he's garbage. You know, he doesn't really have a basic attack other than these two, um, and you're absolutely right. But he looks really cool. He's purple, and he's a really cool color for the Spore Bats. And that's why I would snag him. So that'll do it for uh, Talador. Okay, we are making our way into Shadow Moon Valley, and in Shadow Moon, there is a really awesome pet. Now, this is one of those double-edged sword pets that I talk about sometimes. So he's an aqua type that is strong versus flying types. So he is particularly useful in a few of the um, family familiar fights, the Broken Isles daily pet battles like he can be useful if you're going for that achievement but other than that he's kind of dangerous because you never really want to be playing a aqua type to beat flying types just because flying types do bonus damage to aquatics so it's always a little bit dangerous then the other pet i want to talk about that's kind of just cool is this guy right here the moss bite skitterer now he doesn't have any move sets that are like incredible. Also, he can't roll any pure breeds, so that really does hurt him. Uh, but he's really cool looking. Like you see him just flare his wings there. Anyway, I just would pick one up just because they're really cool. It's that's just entirely a vanity thing. Um, but that'll do it for Shadow Moon Valley. So the last area that we need to cover here, out in Draenor is Nagrand or Nagrand. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. There's controversy about it. I talk about that in my Outland pet video. But the only pet that I would grab out here is this Leatherhide Runt, okay? And the reason I would grab him is because he's awesome. I love the way he looks. He looks a lot like the, uh, um, the same pet that you can find out in Old Nagrand, which is the Cleft Hoof runt so this is a leather hide runt they just look really similar and i just like the character model 
But that'll do it. That'll wrap up our whole tour of Draenor. Have you found this video helpful? A like rating is always appreciated. If there was pets that you use frequently that I didn't include on this list, please let me know. I'd really be interested um, to find out what those are because I'm always looking to improve and become a better pet trainer. Uh, but it was a pleasure gaming with you, and I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Take care.